In the first lesson, you saw me um, save a file and all my imports got removed because of my Go integration. So you can see here that I can also delete it and then hit save and they all come back. And then eventually the errors go away. And this is also because I have this Go integration built into my editor. So I'm currently using VS Code, uh, Visual Studio Code, which I refer to as VS Code, or you'll see me accessing it by typing code and then some file.go or whatever else it happens to be. Um, so that's how I, what I'm using, uh, but there's other options out there. Another good one is GoLand by JetBrains. So if you just go to Google and search like Visual Studio Code Go, um, you'll see that they have a Go plugin and they have some in, you know, instructions here for uh, some of the things that are there. I'm not sure, you don't necessarily need to read all of this, but if you wanna check it out, you can. Um, it's definitely worth getting your editor set up with auto completion and some of those things uh, whenever you're planning on using it. And I think GoLand has all of this set up out of the box. Visual Studio Code, it really doesn't take long to set up, but it's there. Um, but some of the things this is gonna give you, for instance, is the imports. That's the major one, because as I progress through the course, I'm not always going to go to the top and show you the imports that are being added. So let's say this was gone and I was writing and I started using HTTP and I saved, this would get added automatically. So it's something to keep in mind when you're coding along that I'm expecting you to have some sort of integration set up so that these imports are being imported for you. And there might come times in your future where it imports the wrong things, but I found that with Go modules and a lot of the things that have changed uh, somewhat more recently in the Go ecosystem, that happens less often, so you don't have to worry about it too, too much. Um, there's all sorts of other things that come with having any sort of Go integration with you know, an editor that you're using. Uh, for instance, you can have some intelligent autocomplete where you can see it's starting to show me things that are inside the HTTP package without me actually having to go to the docs. So HTTP.cookie is a thing inside of the HTTP package. Um, you can also see here that I went to the definition of this. So I'm now looking at source code from the Go standard library, and it's showing me the cookie type that comes from the HTTP package. Uh, you can also do that by right-clicking and saying go to definition. This is VS Code. I'm sure there's a way to probably do it in GoLand, but I don't know exactly how. So there's also error highlighting, all sorts of other things that are just going to make this useful. You don't necessarily have to use them all, but you'll see me using them some in the course, and I'll try to make it clear what I'm doing when I'm doing it. But you know, just something to keep in mind, especially that go to definition. You're probably going to see me using that a lot because I actually prefer that over going to the Google Docs because it's quicker for me. Um, I don't have to open up my window. I can see the documentation for this function right here, and I can see exactly how it's defined, and I can actually look at any, any of the details that I want to look at. Uh, in my opinion, the primary difference between GoLand and VS Code, if you're trying to decide, is that GoLand is kind of like uh, a full integrated developer environment, whereas uh, VS Code is a little bit closer to just an editor that doesn't try to do everything else. Um, now you can set VS Code up to do a whole lot. You can set it up and use its terminal and all sorts of other things. But I actually like to use my own terminal, which is iTerm that I've been using for a long time. Um, and I have keyboard shortcuts for it and everything, and I can access it from any screen that I'm on, which is part of the reason that I really like having it. Um, I can just sort of run things and change things up really easily and quickly with it, and it's what I'm used to. But you don't have to. Um, you're welcome to use the terminal inside of VS Code or use GoLand and whatever they have to offer. Uh, but that's kind of the big difference for me is that VS Code is kind of a little bit closer to just a plain text editor, whereas v GoLand is a little bit more uh, featureful and more of like a, a full IDE. And uh, I guess the other difference is that GoLand technically costs money, but I think there are different student licenses and other options that if you are trying to learn should make it more accessible to you. So there's no right or wrong choice. Just pick the one that works best for you and find something with some decent integration because that's going to help you a lot. There are also options for like Emacs and Vim if you happen to be a user of those, but I'm kind of just assuming that if you're using Emacs or Vim, you're experienced enough to set them up. I definitely would not suggest trying to learn one of those and go at the same time. Um, I would learn one thing at a time because otherwise it's going to be really frustrating and irritating as you're trying to get everything going. Um, much, much better experiences tend to come from learning one thing like Go and using an editor like VS Code where it's kind of just a text editor that you've used before or you're familiar with. 